It's between Oklahoma and BYU. It's time for our Riverwind Casino keys to the game. Keys to the game? Aaron Miller, what you got? Response. Uh, timely hitting. I think that word time is going to come up quite a bit throughout the next month and a half of season. This, this to me, is a team that needed to be tested, and it's the team that learns the most from losses. They've hit a couple bumps in the past week, and so you got to be able to, to respond in the opportunities now in front of you. Response, timely hitting, worth keeping an eye on tonight for the Sooners. Aaron Miller's keys to the game brought to you by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind Casino, always a good time. Man, the weather could not be it's more perfect. perfect here this evening. I mean, I know it looks like that's going to be the case all weekend long. So if you can find a way to get tickets, get out here. It is it's 67 degrees right now. Now, I might get a little chilly tonight. Aaron might be really mad that I have the windows open by, I don't know, the, the mid-fourth inning. Hopefully, we're not going until the sixth. But it is 67 degrees, uh, and it'll be pleasant all night long. The wind is lightly blowing out of the south. I think the last chance it was at seven to eight miles an hour. So it's going to be a gorgeous night. Today's weather, as always, is presented by the Trails Golf Club in Norman, where you'll experience everything you love about golf and more. You've been listening to the Sooner Softball pregame show, presented by Walden Cleaners and Laundry, where the difference is quality. You ready to go? I'm ready. So have a night. Kelly Maxwell finishes her final pregame tosses. The BYU lineup really challenges the pronunciation guy. Elena Ogbayani will lead things off. If I go Harry Carey a few times and start spelling out the names, <laughs> I just want to let you guys know it's because I'm so impressed that that is the pronunciation based on the way that it's failed. Why did I immediately picture Will Ferrell doing the Harry Carey skit? <laughs> immediately. Well, I'll give you an idea. Ogbayani is spelled A. G B A Y A N I. I think you I think you got it. I think yeah. you nailed it. Yeah. Well and the BYU, I was I was joking with Aaron before the game. On their roster, they um I think they're they were traveling twenty two. And of their twenty two players that they were traveling, uh eighteen of them had a pronunciation guide to make sure yeah. that we were good to go. I don't know what the delay is here. The umpires have walked down. There's there's no timeout coordinator, so there's not a TV issue. Nat Jones, who is with operations. Oh, you know what I bet? I wonder if they're having problems with the pitch clock. Mm. Action clock. Action excuse. Clock. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm getting better, guys. Because as we look down the third base line right out in front of the Sooner dugout, Sergio Villarreal. Jerry Jones is over at first. Chris Neighbors is at third. Sergio is kind of leading a conversation under the watchful eye of BYU head coach Gordon Egan. Legend. Been there for 22 years. Polson Tax Resolution and Accounting brings you our opponent preview. Big day. Big day. Your tax problems don't care who you are, but a Polson Tax Resolution and Accounting, we do. Have you done your taxes yet? I'm good to go. Me too. I mean, I got to pay a lot of money, but I'm good to go. <laughs> uh, 21 and 17 on the season for BYU. They're four and 11 in Big 12 play. They come in having lost four straight games. Pretty good team at home, six and five at home, but just two and ten on the road. They own some good wins this season. They beat Ole Miss earlier this year. They played a tight game with Virginia Tech, whom I know you were impressed with and you saw last week. They lost just 2-1 to one to them. Beat Cal State Fullerton in extra innings. But once we got into Big 12 play, it's been a struggle for the Cougars. Holston Tax Resolution and Accounting. Your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. And here we go. Ogmayani leads things off. We're ready to go. We hope you enjoy the broadcast as much as we'll enjoy bringing it to you. Kelly Maxwell in a lefty-lefty matchup. Brito in at third. First pitch strike. First pitch at 6.07 p.m. Kalen Fournier had it right to the second when we were ready to go. The issue with the, I guess, the 22nd 
action clock has been resolved as the 0-1 pitch is fouled back. Ogbayani, a 425 average. This is a BYU team that hits well against left-handed arms, a 314 average from the left side. The 0-2, oh, that's a really, really good 0-2 oh, pitch. In fact, Ogbayani kind of started to walk a little bit back towards the dugout. She'll dig back in. Brito is back even with the bag now at third. Here comes the one-two. Swing and a miss in the dirt. Hansen does a good job in grabbing it on the short hop. Throws, and there is one away on the strikeout for Kelly Maxwell. Not even close to the strike zone. This, this really wasn't a competitive placement. I was going to say, that like was a really, really good chase. It's like a one-hop to the plate, Kinsey Hansen. That's why she bobbled it, but the swing through is what gets her. One away for Maddie Bejaran. Bejarano, excuse me. Swing and a miss. Okay, aggressive. We're seeing a lot of swings early. Well, a lot of chase. Figuring out the game plan right off the bat. It's good. No balls in a strike. That's way up high, one and one. What's What have you made of what you've seen from Kelly Maxwell the last few weeks when you've had a chance to watch her? You know, so I got to call a lot of Kelly Maxwell early in the season when we'd opened the season here at, mm -hmm. at Love's Field, and she can be a little bit, she was hot and cold for me, I think, early in the season. Two I liked one. I liked the way that she looked against Texas. I think she put together a pretty tough performance. It was a tough weekend, I just think, for the staff as a whole. But I'm waiting for her to settle in and get consistent, consistently dominant. Here comes the... 2-1 pitch, bounce towards short. Chinning stays down on it, gloves, throws, and gets Bayerano two away. By the way, I did not, in our Trails Golf Club weather report, accurately depict what is being projected from a wind speed and what we're getting right now. They're saying the wind's out of the south at 18 miles an hour. And it hmm. seems as if they're gassing that up just a bit, but as soon as I say it, the <laughs> Flags start blowing right out towards left field as the lefty at Zavunik digs in. And the first pitch, a little bit low, ball one. Well, Zavodnik, excuse me. I can't change, take the difference between a D and an O here. <laughs> I'm digging into the numbers, too, just to support what we're seeing from BYU. And they really only take till they get a strike about 30% of the time. So they're an aggressive team. They're going to swing earlier. They're going to swing often. You know that this is stuff that's that this pitching staff is looking at preparing for what they're going to see. The 1-0 pitch, a little check swing by Zavodnik, and she couldn't couldn't keep the bat from hitting the ball. Strike one. Zavodnik hitting 4-11 on this season. 1-1 one, one swing and a miss, strike two. And Maxwell just reared back and threw that right by him. Crowd comes to life. Kelly Maxwell looking to make it a quick one, two, three, top of the first. She misses high. Scoreboard has it at two and two right now. Home plate umpire has been pretty good at correcting any inaccuracy, so we'll go with it. Two balls and two strikes. Lefty, lefty. First righty in the BYU lineup waits on deck. Maxwell with two to go on the action. Clock one brings it home and misses high, ball three. Yeah, these are wide misses, but I think it's purposeful because this team is aggressive. They swing early. They swing often. So pretty liberal, I think, right now with location and just spotting, but it's it appears to be intentional right now from Maxwell. 3-2, good call. Swing and a miss, getting over. <laughs> it's almost like you saw that coming, Aaron Miller. <laughs> Kelly Maxwell strikes out two. The Cougars go down in order in the first. Strikeouts broadcast is presented by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. Along with Aaron Miller, I'm Chris Blank. We have the bottom of the first inning. Coleman, Jennings, and Brito for the Sooners against Chloe Temples, making her fifth Big 12 start. ERA not all that impressive, 4-4-9. Four, four, and in Big 12 play for Temples, it's been significantly worse. 8.19 ERA in conference games. Aaron, she's 0-3. Sooner should have some success here this evening. Let's see if Jada Coleman can start it right.
lefty-lefty matchup. Here's the first pitch. Nearly hit her. It might have. It did. Coleman throws her bat and heads down to first. It did. Right off the toe. <laughs> I, the home plate umpire is, is walking her down and saying that it didn't hit her. Oh, wow. He's yeah. calling her back. Yeah. Jada's taking everything off, and the home plate umpire is calling her back. She doesn't seem to be fighting it too much. Now, now we're going to have a conversation between G Coach Gasso, who is in that third base coach's box, and Sergio Villarreal. They're not really in need to challenge. Well, she is going to challenge it. <laughs> Coach Gasso, Jada Coleman saying, no, 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 don't challenge it. <laughs> and now they'll say, no challenge. <laughs> And now, now we're going to have a... I think what we just saw was some really good performance skills by Jada Coleman, potentially. Right. Gordon Eakin comes out of the dugout for BYU and was pleading the case. Like, are we, cha are we challenging are we this or here? not? Right. All right. One ball and no strikes. Jada Coleman digs back in. 1-0. -oh. In for a strike. One and one. I mean, looking at Temple's wind-up and her setup, she's got that non-dominant leg so far behind the rubber. She's almost straddling the pitching circle. Look how wide the stance is. Yeah. Deep towards the back of the circle, the 1-1. One, one. In for a strike. What's the advantage, or is it just maybe comfort more it's for about her? about force, I think. Just yeah. trying to torque the lower body to develop a little bit of momentum as she rocks and fires to home plate. This is a difference in the, the rule change, too. Remember a time when both feet had to be on the rubber. Here comes the one-two pitch. There's a base hit in the center field by Jada Coleman. She waved off the challenge on the by pitch. <laughs> she wanted to do it herself. <laughs> throws her arms out to the side. <laughs> she has been really, really good since taking back over in that leadoff spot. I, I don't think it's that Coach Gasso ever no. didn't think Jada Coleman was going to be her leadoff hitter, but she's stick, so good. Stick her anywhere. Yeah, Put anywhere. her anywhere. Draw her name out of a hat. Boy, Tiare Jennings is due to hit one to the moon. Here's the first pitch to the Sooner shortstop. And she weakly grounds one towards second. They'll tag out Coleman. No, yes, at second base. No play at first. I think was, she, she dodges the tag. They end up side-throwing for the force out at second base. Okay, because... She's a weasel in the base pass, the, man. Well, the umpire gave the safe call, <laughs> yeah. but then wisely, yep. Kamoku was able to shovel to Ogbayani and get the force at second. That was just a timing issue for Tiare, way out on the front foot, barely hits off the end of her back, kind of a squib in the infield. 416 average for Alyssa Brito as the Sooner third baseman digs in, takes the first pitch for a strike. 450 average with runners on. It is scary to see the numbers, the average numbers of this team with runners on. It's ridiculous. It's like video game numbers. The 0-1. Boy, she can spin it as that ball drops in a little bit in. One ball, one strike. Yeah, already what we're seeing from the left side of Temples is that she's going to challenge up under the hands. She spins the ball like a Frisbee. This is going to be a timing challenge for Oklahoma. The 1-1. One, one. That's another <laughs> yeah. pitch you got to wait and wait, and it's in the dirt ball, too. Not quite a Bugs Bunny, which oh, you know I, I love steal that. that. I you know I love that term. All the time. This People is like Frisbee spin. Okay, all right. Side spin. I don't even know how you would do that. Flick I'm, of the wrist. I'm almost impressed she can do it. <laughs> Big Huge. cut and a miss. Way out in front of it was Brito. Yep, if I'm if I'm calling an adjustment right now this early first inning, it is all timing. You've got to see the ball deep, hit the ball opposite field. It cannot be early. Here comes the 2-2 pitch to the Sooner third baseman with Jennings at first and one away, and that's in the dirt. That's the challenge of being that 1-2-3 punch for Oklahoma, is that you really have to have the strong mentality and approach to be experimental. You're the information grabbers early in the game to then rally that, that info back to the team. 
And it's a group that if you get fooled, they're strong enough to yep. still muscle one into the outfield. Totally. 3-2 pitch. Fouled back by Brito. She had a good beat on that. Sooners are back home after a seven-game road trip. They went 5-2 and two on that trip. Sweeping Kansas, beating Wichita State, and winning the first game against Texas in Austin last weekend. Here's the 3-2 pitch again, and Brito, way out in front of it, swings through it All right. for a strikeout two away. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a changeup tonight. Oklahoma is going to have to defend a changeup. What's the biggest adjustment then as a hitter for everyone? Aaron? Game plan. And that's something that, that JT Gasso prepares a team so well with is have, have a plan. Stick to the plan. Trust the plan. Don't second guess it. First pitch to Ella Parker is a little bit out, ball one. This is the highlight I had in my lineup was Ella Parker. Ah, loves travel stops, player to watch. We'll go with it. Let's do it. Let's loves, get into it. Loves travel stops, the heart of the highway. She's been outstanding this season. The freshman waits on the 1-0 pitch, takes it way outside. Freshman, you. freshman hitting 402, seven home runs on the year. But you want to know what I have highlighted? 13 stolen bases. Leads the team. Holy cow. And when you look at her and her stature, just how she approaches the box, the space that she really takes up, she's very intimidating in the box. I wouldn't coin her as a base stealer. And then you see her around the bases, and you're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're dangerous. She had a six-game hitting streak that included a three-hit, three-RBI performance against Texas Tech, followed up by an 0-for-8 skid. She's now three for her last six, including a hit on Tuesday night. The 3-0 is way outside, ball four. And that'll bring Kinsey Hansen to the plate. Get the sense of the Sooners that are starting to cook a little bit, if I could use that term and not sound like a terribly out-of-touch old man. But Kinsey Hansen has had a nice run recently. She's hit in every game since returning to the Sooner starting lineup. And before that, first pitch in the dirt, ball one. Riding a solid seven-game hitting streak as we're going to have a visit in the circle. And that seven-game hitting streak. It's almost as if she's been a bit of a table setter. She did have three runs batted in on Tuesday night against Wichita State. And you were talking about, you know, hey, someone's got to step up. Someone's yep. got to be the leader. This is a great candidate right here to do she's it. She's spicy, fiery. I love to hear her in post-game interviews. Honestly, any immediate interview at all. I think she's just really poised, very mature mindset. Here's the 1-0. There's a strike. If I was a freshman, if I was an underclassman, and I was a sponge in this game, this is who I'd be soaking up. She is such a gamer. Such a gamer. Back from that knee injury, and as, as we mentioned, clicked pretty quickly. First and second here, two away. Here's the 1-1 in the dirt, 2-1. I think about that, that two-out at-bat she had against Texas, punched it up the middle of the field. Like, the the mental fortitude that this kid has is so special to watch. She wanted that C. She wanted that captain. She got it. Now is back thriving. 2-1. Boy, that ball looked mm. like it was going to be way up. And then just the bottom fell at the last minute. For strike two. This is an impressive changeup. And why stop throwing it? If Oklahoma's taking it, they're swinging through it. You don't want to fix something that's not broken. OU's going to have to make a quick change. Here's the 2-2. Lined into the left center field gap and deep, but racing over and leaping to make an incredible catch is Zavodnik in center field to take away extra bases. Hansen gave it a ride, but Zavodnik in center went up and made a play. And you already noticed one adjustment here for the Sooners. Patty Gasso said post game on Tuesday night, we see players hit the ball hard, 
and they're coming off the field and they got their heads down. Kinsey Hansen came off, gave the clap. Here we go to the second inning. Oklahoma and BYU are scoreless after Kinsey Hansen drove one to the wall and a nice play in center field made by Violet Zavodnik. Hunter Alva will lead things off. First pitch swinging a foul right off the face mask of Kinsey Hansen. Ooh, those hurt. Mm. She's kind of walking around now. No sign of Sooner athletic trainer Mora Dickman, who is back with the team after going to her brother in law's birthday. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Brother in law's wedding this weekend. So if you want to blame anyone, you can blame Andy and Mara because Mara wasn't with the team this weekend. But it was great to see Andy Pigeon back this week, and Andy's doing incredible things for Sooner Volleyball. Kinsey's okay. Here's the 0 1. That's in for a strike. This is the first time I've seen our side of the field, our dugout, mm -hmm. in sunlight. Every single time I've called a game here, it's been full shade. Have you noticed that? And uh, Well, the last time you were here, we hadn't sprung forward, there had we? Go. There you go. There's the difference. <laughs> and the 6 o'clock start, too. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fouled straight back. Ooh, if that net wasn't there, I would have caught that. Just we've, so you know. We've had a solar eclipse since I've been here. I mean, come on. <laughs> The sun has changed. Um, I got to tell you something. I was so anti the eclipse because of how much stuff they had. It was everywhere in Austin. I'm like, this is dumb. And it then was on, so cool. It was awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> I was all about it then when we were watching it. Here's the 0-2 pitch in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. What would you guys do? You have the glasses? You did yeah, the whole nine yards? I felt bad. I, I stole the last pair of glasses from my radio station. <laughs> so I was kind of in trouble. So I'm sorry, Josh Helmer. But my wife and I, like, stood in our front yard and just stared and then took pictures of each other with how goofy we looked while we were looking at it. <laughs> True love. One, two. Bounce towards short. Nice job by Jennings. Has yeah. time. Throws. Got it. What do you make of what T.R. Jennings has done so far this year, taking over for Grace Lines? She's smooth. That's such a tough position to play anyway but to play that position at oklahoma is a whole nother level of expectation if you know coach gasso if you know this program defense is her baby but specifically shortstop you just have to fit a mold to be able to hold down the fort at that position and tiari jennings has done a beautiful job lily owens takes the first pitch low for ball one you were not here during the era of just best were you she was uh her last year was senior 15 okay right my first year was 16. your okay. senior yes. year was my so, first yep, year yep, 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 yep. i was i was the kelsey arnold era. Yes. that's where i started 1-0 is popped up right side shallow right field alina torres races out and makes the catch and there's two away all right I've, i have all these questions on a ball like that yeah you trust your second baseman because it's kind of a no man's land between the outfielder and the second baseman? That one's a tough one. Right. Ideally, with someone on base, I'd want my out, I'd want my right fielder. You'd want gotcha. Pickering to come through and use the momentum to catch that ball. Nobody on. If Torres at second feels like she can get under that ball, of course, take it. But if there's a throw required, outfield needs to take that catch. Natty Udall swings through the first pitch for strike one. Sooners defensively, you're familiar with it by now. Pretty much the same defensive look they've had for the better part of the Big 12 season. At least when Kinsey Hansen's healthy. The 0-1 swing and a miss. Flight to rise for strike two. Brito at third. Jennings at short. Alina Torres has been consistent in second, as has Sid Sanders at first. Jada Coleman in center, flanked by Riley Boone in left. Cassidy Pickering in right. Here's the 0-2. A little check swing foul. Ooh. Watch out. That hit off the awning and shot straight back down. What's been the most impressive shortstop you've seen during your time here? We've had some pretty badass shortstops come through this program. Let me wait and check and see who's listening. So then I'll make sure. To <laughs> <laughs> which shortstop is actually listening right now? I love it. We've Great. had some good ones. We have. We, we, it's really been a blessing really has been and it's kind of interesting too when you think about the transition from arnold to grace lions is that oh two whoa just misses ball one lions was pretty filthy grace lions came in in 2019 right after kelsey arnold had graduated after being a i think kelsey was a two-year captain yep. as well and you just you didn't know right you thought oh is sid gonna move to short is kaylee no this kid named grace lions came in and dominated <laughs> it all fouls that one back yeah 
I was thinking, I had, the reason I ask you this, I had this question as well about middle infielders and just from who I've played with. This was before you mm-hmm. got here, but Shelby Penley's athleticism at shortstop, mm. she even came in and pitched while she was here. Like, yeah. what she did athletically at Oklahoma is pretty wild. 1 2 is fouled back again. Pretty special, man. Pretty special. Scoreless game. We're in the top of the second inning between the Sooners and the BYU Cougars. Yes, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. BYU does not play on Sundays. Here's the 1 2. Swing and just getting a piece of it at the plate. <laughs> I saw my man. We're getting ready for the third inning shout outs here in a bit. And I, I saw our man Demo when we were walking in. Mark Worley was one of the first people I saw. Nate Dog was here. All of our regulars are out here at the ballpark tonight enjoying a beautiful evening at Love's Field. Here's the one two pitch from Maxwell to Udall. And that's lined right at TRA Jenny. Speaking of shortstops, makes the catch inning over. Six up, six down. Not too shabby. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Oklahoma and BYU are scoreless. Cassidy Pickering will lead things off for the Sooners. We have the bottom of the second inning. Oklahoma and BYU are scoreless. Along with Aaron Miller, I'm Chris Plank. Our producer is Austin Woken. Cassidy Pickering has been hitting the ball hard. The first pitch in this lefty-lefty matchup is a little bit low. Ball one my favorite things this weekend was meeting Cassidy's parents. Didn't get to meet her older sister, who I hear was quite the softball player herself. Here comes the 1-0 pitch in this lefty-lefty matchup. There's that off speed. Oh, that's dirty. So I can't call that a lollipop. That's a spinner? I don't think that's a lollipop. Okay, okay I'm going to take back. We saw one lollipop, I think, that, that one that looked super high and then dropped right back okay. in. But most of these have been little frisbee change-ups. Right. Very spinny. Okay. Very, very spinny. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one spins out of the zone. Of course, my favorite check-in happened just moments before first pitch. Whenever Cassidy's grandparents called me to check-in. Heard from Don and Mary Lou Pickering listening in Willow Creek, Montana tonight. Ooh. I've heard Montana's beautiful. A 2-1 pitch. Almost hit her. Ball three. That's on uh, my husband and I's bucket list is Montana. You know, same for me, too. Yeah. I won't lie. I've heard oh, it's gorgeous. My guys from Fowler are out here. It's uh, it's good to see him. Fowler, Toyota, Dallas, and his crew hooked us up big time this year. It was great. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Headed home. Line drive. Foul down the right field line. Fall a steal. Coach Steele over at first base. Try to point it fair, but Jerry Jones, when he's not owning the Cowboys, is umpiring behind first base tonight. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a different Jerry Jones. He's been in the Big 12 circuit for a bit. Three balls and two strikes to Pickering here with a scoreless game. Bottom of the second inning. Sooners have the only hit so far of the game. The 3-2 pitch headed home. Whoa. Called strike three. Out here can't believe it. One away. It's a pretty good pitch. It was a good pitch. Hard not to know with the replay, but... From the left side, the way that ball's breaking, that was mm-hmm. a curve ball, kind of an inside-out pitch against Pickering. Mm-hmm. Too close to take, I'll tell you that much. I'm not leaving that in the hands of an umpire. Here's Sidney Sanders. First pitch to Sid. That is a tough pitch to take. Strike one. Sid Sanders had one of the hottest streaks we've seen so far this season, and right now it couldn't be more opposite. Struggles here for the second-year Sooner who takes ball one low. It's Pickering's 10th K of the year. Mm. Doesn't strike out often. This whole team doesn't strike out often. No. No. Sanders hasn't had a home run since March 12th. Here's the 1-1. She had a good cut and fouled it off. She's 0 for her last 9. And just 1 for her last 17. I only bring up these types of numbers to completely and totally jinx them. That's the goal here. 
<laughs> Turn it around, Sid. Here's the one-two pitch in a scoreless game headed home. Up high, two and two. We got enough sun in here, Aaron Miller. This I got the shades on. This might involve us having to go with the shades. The 2-2 pitch. Sanders averages dip below 300, 296. She takes ball two, our ball three, just a little bit out. In fact, BYU thought they'd had a cold strike three on that. <laughs> Some fans feel like that was in the exact same spot as the Pickering 3-2 pitch. Here's the 3-2 to Sanders. Soft roller to third. Nice job by Udall. Up with it. Big throw. Two away. That was the off speed again. Just out in front of me. Yeah, Oklahoma. We just still have not timed that pitch up. So with, when Aaron Miller would see a pitcher like this, what's the adjustment in the box? I would be aiming down. Well, I was a lefty. I'd be aiming right down the line of the opposite side of the field. So I'm a lefty. I'd be aiming down the left foul pole line i'm seeing the ball so deep that i'm going to hit it down to that side of the field there's just no way i'm going to be early no way here's the first pitch to alina torres misses a little bit out Ooh, ball one. that looked like the same type of location as the k against pickering ball there again things have been a little bit of a battle for the sooner second baseman recently 1-0 pitch in the dirt, two balls and no strikes. She's just one for her last 11 after a four-game hitting streak that included two multi-hit games. And much like Sid Sanders, a hot stretch at the start of Big 12 play. She's ahead 2-0 here. The pitch at off speed falls in, strike one, two and one. It is something else here tonight. Gorgeous. Shadows casting in from the flags beyond the left field wall. The 2-1 pitch up and in ball three. Continued growth of Love's Field. Carpeted in the press box and down in the team areas now. Starting to come together. Three balls and one strike to the Sooner second baseman. Temples brings it home. All four. So you're going to get as deep in the... Are you going to get deep in the box or no? Are you going to? Are you just going to be waiting? Moving my body was always the very last okay. resort. For me, it was all about a timing window. So trying to hit the ball off my back foot, right? Trying to hit the ball off my back hip, really seeing the pitch deep into the strike zone. And right now with Boone being the nine hole, one time through the order, you would expect that we'd make some adjustments and we'd mm. see some changes now, having seen Temples at least one time through the order. We have a visit to the circle an opportunity to try to make sure and realize all right we're, we're getting where this is the second time through the lineup make your adjustments too how impressed have you been with what riley boone's doing this year 443 average yeah 20 runs batted in credible in center field in uh, right or left field wherever she is she's pretty special she's she's a more than just the stats, Plank, I think what I love about her is just watching the way she plays the game. She's a very passionate athlete. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She celebrates moments. The team rallies behind that. She's just got a lot of energy. I love the way she plays the game. I also love, I circled the, uh, the one home run on the air. I don't know if you guys missed that, but <laughs> when she did go yard, that sucker was long gone. That was gone. launched. She has five multi-RBI games this season. She also has 13 multi-hit games this year. In the nine hole, she digs in. Scoreless game. First pitch. Showed a bunt, but takes a strike. Boy, they came charging hard. Udall, the third baseman for BYU and Ava, over at first. Yeah, infield's grooving. They're moving. Yeah. 
Udall's pinched up the line, too. She is hugging My the line. Goodness. You don't see that very often. Her right foot is almost on the chalk midway between third and home. As the third baseman. There's a line drive base hit and the left center field from Boone. Torres round second hard, slides in safely at third. Boone's in with a double. And the crowd appreciates it as they should. Boone. Here's Jada Coleman. She hit that ball exactly where the infield was in. Both Udall at third base and Agabani at shortstop shaded over into that 5-6 hole. Wide open gap up the middle of the field, and that's exactly where Riley Boone places that line drive. Well, Pete Meredith has walked out to the circle, and, you know, you, you kind of alluded to this, Aaron. The second time through the lineup, the adjustments might be there for the Sooners, and I think BYU recognize that as well so we'll have our first pitching change of the night Alyssa Aguiar Alyssa Aguilar called upon here with runners at second and third and two outs we are scoreless in the bottom of the second inning and again you you never know they might go back to temples Sooners didn't necessarily Lighter up by any stretch of the imagination. I think right now, from what we're seeing just in the warm up, it's curveball, rise ball, curveball, rise ball. She's going to stay away from righties and then challenge up in the zone. But still, this is not fast speed. Both of these arms are going to still require some timing adjustment right now from us. Aguilar pitched on Tuesday night against Utah Valley. When an inning allowed a run on the season, a 3.50 ERA, 16 innings pitched. 14th appearance on the season. Her best outing in an inning against Utah Tech struck out the side in a 9-1 BYU win. We're set. Jada Coleman bats. Runners at second and third. First pitch to Jada is... Low for ball one, and you're right. This is a similar velocity from what they saw from Temples. Boy, look at this defensive alignment, too. The shortstop, Ogbayani, is shaded towards third, and Coleman hits one deep to left field, and it's gone! A home run from Jada Coleman with two outs in the second. It's a cold world, and J. Cole goes yard, and it's 3 nothing Sooners. You said as a lefty, you'd wait, and you'd wait, and Coleman did just that and popped it out of here to left field. 3 nothing Sooners. That's exactly right. That's that's high IQ hitting. That's senior hitting right there. And you can, she's already coming back out of the dugout. And she's feeding information to Tiara Jennings before she steps into the box. But she was not going to get beat early. She was not going to be out on the front side seeing the ball deep and already seeing adjustments now the second time through the order. Coleman hits home run number 10 on the season for Jada. As the first pitch to Tiara is in for a strike. In Big 12 play, that is her seventh home run. And the Sooners, as a team, have hit 81 home runs now this season. 3 nothing Sooners. 0-1 pitch to Jennings is outside. 3 nothing Sooners on a blast from Jada Coleman. Home runs this year brought to you by the dedicated people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. The 1-1 the, uh, one -one misses outside, 2-0. Okay, boys, got to get the scoreboard right. They're going to get in trouble. <laughs> Here's the pitch to Jennings. Hangs up high. Oh, I'm not sure where that one missed. I, be I believe the count is 3-1 and one here. They have 2-2 two -two on the scoreboard. I think we're 3-1. The umpire looked down and didn't correct it. Maybe I'm the one off. We're about to find out the pitch to Jennings. Nope, there's ball four. Yeah.
for Sooner hitters. That's the third walk that they've drawn, which now equals the highest numbers of walks they had drawn in any game versus Texas this weekend. Isn't that wild? Three on Friday, three on Sunday, none on Saturday. Wow. Yeah. Said Lally Gutierrez was something else, man. She was on the money. I didn't like it. But uh, after hearing her story, I really like her. Here's Alyssa Brito. First pitch to Brito. Grounds it off the pitcher. Ricochets towards second. Shovel not in time from Kamuko, who made a heck of a play. We'll check on Aguilar and see if she's okay. She looks to be okay. It ricocheted right off her. Mm. Everyone looks to be fine. Everybody's safe. It's for the Sooners, their fourth hit of the game. And here's Ella Parker. Moku made a nice play over at second, but couldn't get there in time. First pitch. That ball had some spin and misses inside for ball one. It's been an interesting zone so far through two innings. It's been wide at times. It's been tight. The 1-0. A little bit low. A big jump off second for Jennings, but she gets back to the back. This is the count you want if you're Ella Parker. A 2-0 count. You're waiting for something that you can at least handle a double with and another meeting now happening in the circle. We are setting a record for trips to the circle wow. this half inning. Wow. Wow, indeed. Well, we can get a jump start on our third inning shout-outs because there's a lot of them here tonight. The Kitches are tuning from the left field bleachers during their first trip to Love's. They said hit us lots of bombs. Kitch, you got one so far, all right? You got one so far, Galen. Trey Linda Kurz got us tuned in and more. Becky Cole is in South OKC and more. Kelly and Anita Ford listening in while at Love's Field. Larry and the St. Pete Soonered in. Mark and Stephanie in Antlers, Oklahoma. Our buddy Evan has got his ears on as does Monty and Jamie Gaston and Duran. We'll get to the rest in the third. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's way up high and in ball three. Third inning shout-outs brought to you by Century Roofing, centuryroofingok.com. So let us know where you're listening from at OU on the air, and we'll hit them all in the third next inning. 3-0 pitch with runners at first and second is ripped Ooh. to the right field line wow. foul. <laughs> if that railing wasn't there, that had taken out a knee. <laughs> the fan that was sitting in the front row <laughs> reached up and patted that netting as if to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it was right there. Three balls and a strike, three nothing Sooners on a three-run home run from Jada Coleman. The pitch. That ball's hit hard and deep to center field, but Savodnik has a beat on him, makes the catch, and the inning is over. Sooners hit the ball hard, but come up uh, empty, and Parker's at bat, but strike first. A three-run home run from Jada Coleman. And as we head to the third inning, it's Oklahoma 3, BYU nothing. Nothing Sooners as we head to the third. We'll get your third inning shout-outs. Let us know where you're listening from at OU on the air. And they're brought to you by Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma. Before we start the third, let's pause 10 seconds for station ID. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield. KEBC Del Cid, a product of Tyler Mead, powered by Parrish Devon, official personal injury lawyers of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Visit PepperWins.com. Three-nothing Sooners, first pitch to Kayla Komoku is in for a strike. Three runs on four hits for the Sooners. As the 0-1 pitch is fouled back by Kamoku. Zeros everywhere for the Cougars. Shadows start to cascade across the outfield for the Sooners, pushing towards the infield. Riley Boone completely in shade. That 0-2 pitch was just filthy. Misses a little bit in ball one. Jada Coleman, it, looks, it almost looks like the shadows chasing her in center field. Looks like a city skyline, yeah. all the shadows. From the flags and the camera well and the trees. light pole and the trees. One, two is grounded to wow, third. Nice, nice play by Brito. Throws high. Holy cow. Sanders reaches down and tags her. The throw from Brito pulled Sanders off the bag, but Sid gets the tag. And there's one away. It's the combination between 
the range, the urgency, the reaction from Brito. Then you have this hurling arm across the field, and even though it's an errant wide throw, Sidney Sanders is able to land the tag for the out. This defense is wild. There's Haley Morrow. First pitch up high, ball one. Morrow is, well, this this part of the lineup for BYU is will where you can't let them make any hay, if you will. In a struggling part, Morrow hitting just 200 on the season, but Maxwell falls behind, two balls and no strikes. Three nothing Sooners. Jada Coleman second inning three run home run the difference. The 2-0, way out early and fouls it straight back two and one. Morrow making her 31st start of the season. She's driven in 14 runs. Has walked 13 times, but has struck out 16. A 2-1 pitch for Maxwell. Boy, that's a good spot. Strike two, two and two. Kelly Maxwell's picked right up where she left off from this weekend in Austin. Throwing BBs. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Fourth strike out of the game for Maxwell. There's two away for Taryn Lennon. Red Leverage has us tuned in up in New York City. Sharice in Austin. Joel in Rogersville. Gary and Darla in Mountain View, Oklahoma. Eddie Pauly's watching from Cozumel, Mexico. Can't beat that view. Swing and a miss on the first pitch to Taryn Lennon for strike one. Where am I wrong? I'm seeing three. For strikeouts? Yeah. Hog by Ani. I'm showing Zavodnik. that Lily Owens popped out to, to second base. Ooh. We're going to get to the bottom of Here's this. Here's the 0-1. She may have. There's a fly ball to shallow right field. Peckering races in, makes the catch. Who's got the correct the Hold scorebook? On. Hold on. Let's look. I think it's you. Kinsey Hansen things off for the Sooners in the bottom of the third inning. 3-0 Oklahoma. Heard from our buddy Jerry Isbell, Chief George Tiger up in Bristow, Larissa Holquin, and Eric got us tuned in tonight. Buddy Mark Worley and on site here. Kevin is tuned in from the parking lot known as Memorial Drive in Tulsa. Is it that on Memorial? 61st, 71st? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of construction on Memorial. Ah. Right First pitch to Kinsey Hansen is grounded sharply towards short. Up with it is Ogbayani throws and got him. Randy Karen and Dwayne tuned in down in Florida. Counting the days down until the OU-UCF games in Orlando. Two weeks. Not going to lie, though, pretty happy to be home for seven games. <laughs> when you're on the road for seven straight games, and one of those series is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. You have a midweek after the tough trip to Austin. In a minute for the Sooners to be here as the first pitch spins up high for ball one for Maggill. I tell you, I've covered a lot of different teams so far this season. That has been a consistent complaint and a worry for squads is rest. Mm. Just constantly feeling tired. Pickering hits one deep to left center field. Get out of here, ball. It's gone. Pickering. Home run. Four nothing Sooners. And that was a no-doubter to left center field off the bat of the freshman Pickering. Notice the side of the field that was on. That's an opposite field home run. Both home runs we've seen tonight from Jada Coleman and Cassidy Pickering. They've seen the ball deep. They've allowed the ball to meet the barrel instead of going to fish for that contact. And that's the adjustment I think that this team is craving. And another pitching change here. <laughs> pitching changes brought to you by Love's Travel Stops. Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. BYU will turn to Katie Dolly. We'll get the call here for Pickering. As we mentioned, the home run on the season is her fifth. Chalk up her 20th RBI. It's her second 
home run of Big 12 play and her first home run, Aaron Miller, since March 19th against Texas Tech. It's her first home run at Love's Field since the opener. Why does it feel like she has way more long balls than that? <laughs> I felt the same way whenever I looked. I was I like, what? Only five? That doesn't, that that doesn't, doesn't feel right. That doesn't seem right. That number is way incorrect. So, pitching change time. Kay Daly will be called upon here to try to slow things down for BYU. Daly on the season, a 5.61 ERA, 27th appearance. She's 5-5 five and five on the season. Opponents hitting 332 against her. And it hasn't been too terribly much better for her in Big 12 play either. So she'll be called upon to try to slow down the Sooner attack. After the home run by Cassidy Pickering. Very slow, methodical windup from Dolly in the circle. That would throw me off in the box. The arm, the windup, everything's just very, very slow. Jim and M have tuned in from the Lake of the Ozarks. Tina Kays in Edmond. Bruce Burnett, the OU Birmingham Club in Bama. Paige Cole is up in Tulsa. Our buddy Joe Fournier has got us synced up in Pensacola. Thrilled to see Caitlin, Joe's outstanding daughter. Jim and Jeanette are tuning in Edmond. Jalen's got us on while watching baseball practice in Waco. Jessica Bame up in Rainey, Ohio. Sooner Judy in Rudy, uh, Rudoso, New Mexico. There's Lisa Jean up in Tulsa. And Toby Whitney in Washington, D.C. What's up, Lisa? Good to see Lisa Jean. All right. Let's see if Sid Sanders can get things going. Time is called, though, before the first pitch can even be thrown. And a time was called from the circle by Dolly. Righty misses low and away. Just to kind of give you an idea of how deep BYU can go, they have thrown seven pitchers this season. So. It kind of appears to be the approach, too, is immediately when one starts to get some solid contact against mm -hmm. the arm, the change is made. I was honestly shocked that Temples was pulled out as early as she was. She had so yeah. much success the first time through the order. Why not see how deep she could go the second time through? The, the change-up was very effective. But just to be my own devil's advocate here, it's a three-game series. This is a long weekend. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Maybe feel like you can get another inning or two. Exactly. Out of Temples later in the weekend, maybe even for Aguilar. Sid Sanders 0 for 1 today, grounded out to third her last time up. She takes the 1-0 pitch low and away ball, too. Full stadium for a Thursday night. This is awesome. Not bad, right? Weather's perfect. Truly. I mean, this is our packed house. Oh, my goodness. We're going to get another time. Pete Meredith is going to walk. Are we going to get another pitching change? No way. After two pitches, Meredith, the associate head coach, walks out and... I was the only reason I asked are we going to get another pitching change because as soon as Meredith walked out like literally two steps behind him was BYU's head coach and I'm like well you can hold on here you got to at least give her more than two pitches right <laughs> but it looks like it was just Gordon Eakin making sure I think he he asked he, he said it looked like he said is that the third or something three right. related to the home plate umpire so it's four nothing Sooners all right, whatever the meeting was about, it's over. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Way outside, ball three. BYU has a win over Oklahoma State this year. Here's a three-ball no-strike pitch to the Sooner first baseman. Ball, oh, a call to strike on a pitch and actually kind of darted away from Morrow behind the plate, the catcher. Sooner Yaya has checked in for Northwest Oklahoma City. Gunny out in Porter. Teresa's in Section 20 with Vicky Deanne and Craig. Miss Jane Jetson's in Dallas. CD and Deb hooked up in Hockley, Texas. My man Big Zill, the pitch count guy in Ada. Three and one. Big swing wow. and a miss. She was way out in front of it. Strike two. Sid's going to take a little walk. It didn't even look like she saw that pitch. 
very uncharacteristic swing from Sid Sanders. A 3-1 count. That's a hitter's count. That pitch not even anywhere near something <laughs> that she can mm. handle. Here's the 3-2 to Sid. Grounded foul. She was way out in front of that, too, yeah. down the third baseline. Another off speed. This is consistent, I think, up and down for this pitching staff. If you're unable to make the adjustment on the off speed, these arms will give you fits. They'll give you fits. And both of the successful swings so far from Jada Coleman and Pickering, the home runs were opposite field, seeing the ball deep. Three balls and two strikes. The pitch way low. Ball four. Sid Sanders will reach. You mentioned the success against Oklahoma State. Looking at BYU's lineup, there's only one out of the starting nine that doesn't have at least three home runs on the year. I mean, the, the power, the spread of consistency of what this team can do offensively is pretty impressive. So I'm not shocked that they've had some stout success against some ranked teams, but to your point, they've had some ugly losses this season where they just really have fallen to competition including utah valley yeah and uh, we got a pinch runner here the pinch runner is maya bland she's been obviously the topic of a lot of conversations after saturday night in the play at the plate which i mean I kind of think they got right. I mean, they, they did a great job explaining that on the ESPN block broadcast. Here's the first pitch to Alina Torres. Up high. Off the second goes Bland. She slides in. Oh, they got her at second. It looked like she was ahead of the tag. She got a really late jump. She's wanting Coach Casso to challenge it. Why not? I... I I think she got in, but the umpire was right on top of it. Like if that, if that's a missed call, that umpire's got to feel awful because he had a great view of it. I mean, he was right on top of it. And Bland, well, you never think you're out, right? You never right? think you're out. Bland pops up and immediately wanted the challenge. Here's what I can tell you: the the pop out of the pocket from Morrow is impressive, but the tag at shortstop. Yeah. From Ogbayani, I mean, quick, urgent, slams the glove down right in front of the bag. But to your point, I think the question, without being able to see the review mm. firsthand, is did the hand of Maya Bland get in there mm. in time? Jennifer Bynum is in Las Vegas while doing work in the yard. Not bad. John is in here in Texas. Hmm. Richard Martis, who is our official review, says because of the shadow, there's probably not enough to overturn on the replay. That's a good reminder, too, that Thanks, when, they, when they do these official reviews, there has to be enough evidence to overturn the call as it stands on the field. The call on the field right now is out. So there has to be undisputable evidence seen on replay footage to be able to turn that call around. Deb, Rachel, and Holly are in Alexandria, Virginia. Larry's in BA, Broken Arrow. Kevin up in Topeka. Kevin, great to meet you last week. Ron Montgomery is in Yukon. Shouts out to his daughter-in-law, Whitney Ellis Montgomery. I see uh, Whitney. I, I somehow have ended up following the former Sooner on Facebook, and I always see her at a kid's practice or something. She's... She's always at an event. Long review taking place. This review is brought to you by Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law. It's the law firm you should turn to for all your personal injury needs. Again, as Aaron astutely pointed out, there has to be enough evidence to overturn. They're taking their time on this review. Must be some juicy footage. TJ Carter and Big Sky Sooner have us. Bill and Dana are in are Buckle Mountains near Doherty, Oklahoma. Josh is in Eden, uh, Enid. Tomble, Texas for Sooner Amy. Oh, you architect is listening in Norman after a trip to Wilmington, North Carolina. Mama T's in Manford. Home of University of Tulsa great Jeremy Bunch. Nobody would probably get that reference but me. Played for the University of Tulsa for three years to start. This is a lengthy review, though. Very. I, 
kind of makes you hope a little bit more that there is a chance. Yeah, Stephen York says he feels like the right hand got in, but there may not be a good view to overturn. All I know is Noble McIntyre's getting his money worth on that uh, logo, <laughs> logo fly of the official review on the scoreboard. It's fun to have Noble out here a couple of weeks ago throughout the first pitch. I think it's going to be worth watching regardless of what this call is. Afterwards, I was talking to, to Coach Karen Johns, who is a great statistician for ESPN. Love her. She's and we, amazing. She is awesome. I mean, I, I can get lost talking softball with her. And she was bringing up on that play, not necessarily about anything at the plate, but how it looked like Maya Bland didn't get the best jump off first base. And... That might be a result of some of the early leaving calls. Here's the official review. I think they're still going to call her out. Point to second. Yeah, they are. So a caught stealing for Maya Bland, a rarity. And there's two away. How rare is that caught stealing? Sooners are now 47 of 53 in stolen base opportunities. Bland, only the second time in 10 attempts that she's been caught. All right, a 1-0 count here to Alina Torres after a very lengthy review. Thanks to Noble McIntyre and La McIntyre Law. 4-0 Sooners were in the bottom of the third inning. The 1-0 pitch, low and away, 2-0. Four runs on five hits for the Sooners. See if Elena Torres can get that sixth hit. Well, she'll take the 2-0 for a strike and go for a little walk. She immediately turned to the Sooner dugout and gave the like the finger pointing down. So whatever she saw, she was trying to share information in the middle of an at-bat, which you have to appreciate. Here's the 2-1 to Torres. Little low, ball three. I feel like the pace of play has significantly slowed down since Dolly got in the yes. circle. <laughs> I mean, she is really <laughs> moving slow. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Torres. Ball four. Wow. I don't know where that one missed. We've seen yeah. an inconsistent zone. Torres has walked both times, and as she tried to toss her Evo shield to Riley Boone, she almost took Boone out. Couple more here, our buddy Joe Bob Hackney on his way to Midland, Texas. Bobby McKay. Oh, this is good. Bobby asks, ask Karen her thoughts on all the challenges in leaving base early, even when a ball is not put in play. I feel it should not be allowed to be challenged unless a runner advances a base. Ooh. It is the rules, though, Bobby. It is the rules. Can't leave early at all. Boone is one for one. She has one of the five sooner hits as that pitch is low and in the dirt. Are we getting a little too carried away with some of the leaving early calls, some of the challenges? Um, I, oh, man. So here, here's my thing. Why did we implement replay, right, to get the game right? That's correct? right. To call the game correct. Boone takes a strike on the 1-0. And unfortunately, we can't pick and choose on what parts of the game right. we get right. And part of that is leaving the base at the correct time. And I think that it's it's the nature of the beast. Boone pops one to center field. Zavodnik is under and makes the catch, and the inning comes to an end. We'll we head to the fourth. Oklahoma on top four. Nothing. Kelly Maxwell back to work at the Trails Golf Club in Norman. You'll experience everything you love about golf and more. Learn about spring membership specials and the advantages of belonging to a private club today. Visit trailsgolf.com to learn more. And located just minutes from the OU campus, the Courtyard by Marriott Norman is competitively priced with travelers in mind. Learn more about our great amenities and book your stay today at marriott.com slash OKCNO. That's where I stay. That's where I'll be going. I love the Courtyard Marriott. Me too. Whenever I would travel from Tulsa, it's the same way. Lena Agbayani swings to the first. Oh, got a piece of it. Found it back for strike one. Tuesday night, whenever we were in Wichita, Aaron, our broadcast location was a table 
right behind the netting, right behind home plate. Do you have any jump scares? I did not. I did good on that. Good. But there was a couple times as the 0-1 pitch is in for strike two. Well, I didn't want to be too loud questioning a call because you were tight. Yeah. I, the room we have here at Love's Field, you know, compress that down. You're right to, there. You're, you're in a, the mix. But that's so hard with your headset on. You don't even realize how loud you're Yes. Doing. You know, 0-2 is grounded foul. Did the wind blow your setup away, too? We were good. And okay, you know good. what? We're The only thing that was hard about it is you couldn't really judge fly balls all that well yeah. because you were down. And then if a play happened down the first baseline, you, you were blocked. So I'd be jumping up and down. People behind me probably hate me. <laughs> the 0-2, did she check her swing on a pitch up and away? I think she did. She did. Because they check with a third base umpire. He says, safe. Yeah, that's tough when you're down in the elements in a ballpark because you're... You're animated, which I love that about your call. You're mm. animated. You're in it. You're loud. You're passionate on air. But if you're in the elements, that can be... Yeah, that's right. You can kind of be a nuisance to people, yeah? The one, two, grounded sharply towards the right side. Sanders makes the play off the chalk for the first out of the inning. What you mean whenever two guys almost beat me up in Mexico that were what? Washington fans? <laughs> I might be a little bit facetious Stop about it. that. They were not happy with me. I thought I thought Nacio Jennings was going to have to come over there. Were you just doing your job? I was doing my job. Well, there you go. They weren't happy with me. Of course, I don't think they were really happy whenever I (laughs) thought there was no reason to review a call that was reviewed. And I was wrong. I mean, (laughs) that play at home played back in the second, third game of the year. First pitch to the left fielder. Bayrano is low, ball one. Kelly Maxwell dealing. Has a four-zip lead. It's fallen behind Bayerano, a ball and no strikes. The pitch grounded softly towards short, charged by Jennings. Gloves throws two away. And here's Violet Zavodnik. So our buddy Doug Hamilton had checked in. Um, Hockley, Texas. The Snack Czar. What a name, the Snack Czar. I think I'm going to steal your nickname, sir. Dr. Susan Walden is listening from Arkansas. It's part of an eclipse trip. Sooner Judy. I think we mentioned Judy. You get a double shout out. Pop up back towards us. It's going to hit off the overhang the facade and fall back down. It is a crowd that's ready to roar tonight. Sooners have given him some juice here with a four-zip lead in the top of the fourth inning. Home runs from Cassidy Pickering and Jada Coleman. Here's the 0-1 from Maxwell. Popped up on the infield. Sid Sanders will make the catch and in the inning. 12 up, 12 down. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Oklahoma in control, leading 4 nothing. This is Sooner Softball from Learfield. Honored Kelly Maxwell with a montage on her senior night. And then saying or yelled happy birthday to her as Kelly Maxwell celebrates her birthday. She's been outstanding so far, shutting out BYU. As Jada Coleman strides to the plate, OU up 4-0. Michael Loveless, Chris Emerson, Zane's in the house. Thanks for tuning in tonight, guys. We appreciate it. Jada Coleman's 2-for-2 with a single, a home run, three runs batted in. First pitch is in for a strike from Dolly. She's one of the two, I feel like, that have really made a, an adjustment this evening. This has been a challenge on timing. I, th- this will continue to be a challenge for us all weekend. Just seeing the ball in, not being early. That one hits in the dirt even before it gets to the plate. What would you see? Is this a new arm in the circle? Is this still Aguilar? No, I think it's Dolly. She oh, came that's in. what I meant. That's what I meant. Dolly. It is. It is. I got to keep track. Kate, listen, I screwed up the strikeout, so I can't say anything tonight. The 1-1 one, one is a check swing Ooh. that might work perfectly. Dolly Gloves throws, but got her. Coleman got fooled. The ball hit off her bat. It hit, and it spun right in front of the circle. But Dolly makes a nice play. There's For a second, away. I thought it was a bunt attempt, but it wasn't. It was an oopsie <laughs> swing. Gordon Eakin is out of the dugout pushing his third baseman Udall off the line (laughs) one away first time 
Jada Coleman's been retired tonight. Here is Tiari Jennings. Hard hit ball towards short. Nice job by Ogbayani. Throws across, and there's quickly two away for the Sooners. Here in the fourth. BYU's had some deep defense that has showed up nicely tonight. Some hard hit balls. Mm. Stay down on. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, to the Sirius XM College Sports Radio Channel 375 and Channel 84 in the car, and on all the all new and on the all new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home for your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. Cheer along. Or cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial today, SiriusXM.us slash Big 12 Radio 2023. Brito's going to slow things down. She goes down and chats with Coach Gasso. Have we figured out if the walk-up songs were awarded? Yes, they hit everything they needed to get walk-up songs. So, so they did win them out. They did win them out. All right. Okay, fine. So you can continue to fine. be mad at Katie Self. She'll never live that down. <laughs> Here's Brito. Two outs for the Sooners in the fourth, up 4 nothing. First pitch in for a strike. I wonder if it's the same threshold, the 3.5 GPA. Like, I wonder if they had still still the same standard. You're not here tomorrow, though, are you? I'm not. I'll ask in text. Please. Here's the 1-0. Oh, They're off speed. Off speed right in there for strike one. I'm headed to Como, covering Mizzou, Florida. Should be a fun one. Should be a fun one. Florida just lost their midweek to South Florida this week. Boy, they had to, coming down to the last at bat, last strike. Same type of drama we saw with OU in Texas. The 0-2. Did you see that? I didn't. I didn't see. I just saw the box score. I didn't actually Skyler see. Skyler Wallace drop third strike. Two outs. Two strikes. Catcher air mails it. They win the game. Wow. Yeah. But she again dropped third strike. She took off. Challenged the throw. That's why you got to stay plugged into the game, right? Was it, was, like, it jo- was it Jocelyn? I think it was Erickson behind the plate. Yeah. She's had a great season of She has had a great year. Yeah, she's been solid at the plate, solid defensively. Good to see her have fun, excel, miss her here. The 2-2 two, two skips up. On the Tennessee side, Nugent's over there. She's playing Zeta well. Pooney is doing well over there. Kinsey Don, who stepped away from softball this year, retiring. When you look across the country, I mean, <laughs> they're... Uh, there's a lot of former Sooners that are, are playing a little bit of everywhere right now. The 3-2 pitch to Brito, swing and a miss. I mean, she was so far out in front of that, Aaron. Sooners go 1-2-3 in the fourth. With Aaron Miller, I'm Chris Plank. 4 nothing Sooners as we head to the fifth. Hunter Alva will lead things off. First pitch, bounce to third. Nice job by Brito off the big hop. Throws across, one away. Here's Lily Owens. Been one, two, three innings from the jump for Sooner defense. And Kelly Maxwell has only struck out three. We wanted four. Plank tried, wanted four. Tried this, to give her four. Let's see. Lily Owens. Lily <laughs> Owens popped out to second. I don't think she strikes out a lot. Kinsey Hansen calls time as she is readjusting the pitch watch. The entire field now is covered in shadows. Lights start to pop on here at Love's Field on a gorgeous evening. The wind is nil. That's the first pitch. Check swing. She went. Strike one. Love's Field. The side for six of the next seven games for the Sooners. We'll be in Oklahoma City a week from Tuesday, or next Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. I know you takes on Tulsa. Tulsa had a pretty nice performance against Oklahoma State last night. I was night. just going to say, TU consistently gives us a very tough game. One ball, one strike. Maxwell rocks and fires. Swing and a miss way out in front of it. Strike two. Hey, you may get that fourth K right here. How about she gets a strikeout and then a blue, and the Sooners put four on the board in the bottom of the fifth inning? Mm. One, two. Check swing, base hit in the left field. And that's the first hit for BYU. If only Ryan Aber hadn't tweeted about Kelly Maxwell having a no-hitter. 
She'd still have a no-hitter. <laughs> Abra Jinxtus. <laughs> Do you believe in the jinx? They don't say anything in the dugout, that's for certain. Um, First hit of the game, by the way, for BYU. I don't know. I was never really superstitious. Oh, okay. Still am not. There's Natty, uh, Matty Udall. First pitch low in it. I'm for sure not superstitious as an analyst. I can tell you that much. 13 straight retired by Kelly Maxwell before the one-out single here in the top of the fifth inning by Lily Owens. Here comes the 1-0. Pop foul and out of play down the right side. And fans get so mad when you start to, <laughs> when you start to talk about it. Perfect game, a no-hitter. The whole nine yards, they they get so bent out of shape. Yes. <laughs> the Vin, answer is yes. Vin, you're right, they do. Vin Scully, who called many no-hitters, did not believe in the jinx. 1-1 one, one is popped up right side down the line, slicing out of play. It hits off the net. Well, I asked you earlier, did, were you doing your job? Did they get mad? Yeah. Because it's like that's, well, that's part of it, you yeah, know? you got to call what you're seeing. Hmm. Uh, Kelly Maxwell took a no-hitter with two outs into the bottom of the seventh inning against Kansas two what, week ago Thursday. There's a check swing on a ball low and in. Oh, she went. Called strike three. There's that fourth strikeout. See, it was just a matter of time. Two away. Here's Kayla Kamoka. Kelly Maxwell took a no-hitter. Two Thursdays ago, not this last Thursday, but the previous one. I think I said that right. And after Kansas hit a solo home run in the seventh, Kinsey Hansen yelled in the dugout, who said something? The first pitch is up high. The rumors were centering, centering around that may, maybe, maybe there was a certain senior that might have played for Edison for a little bit that had mentioned something in the dugout right before the home run. Pop foul out of play. Could have also spent some time at Owasso. Maybe hits nine. Maybe. Maybe her mom's a Hall of Famer at Pahuska. But again, these are just rumors. One ball and one strike. Runner at first. It's the first base runner of the game for BYU. 4 nothing though, Sooners. Top of the fifth. Here's the pitch from Maxwell. Check swing on a ball in the dirt. They say she went strike two, and a great job by Kinsey Hansen to get in front of that. The way she pops out of the pocket, she's just so so urgent. Yep, her reactions are elite. Here comes the one two up and in. Two balls and two strikes. We'll be back on the air tomorrow night at 5.45 p.m. for game two of this series. Six o'clock first pitch. Hope to see you out here at Love's Field. A 2-2 foul back. As Aaron said, she's off to ESPN. Are you on SEC Network this weekend? SEC Network, yeah. I start thinking about teams that could be Super regional opponents or maybe oh, even regional yeah. teams. 2-2 uh -huh. pitch up and in. Runner goes. The throw is on line, but it one-hopped Torres. who Couldn't hang on to it. Now, pretty good chance I think Owens would have been safe anyway. Stolen base for Lily Owens. That's her eighth. She's never been thrown out this season. Eight for eight so far. BYU now 42 of 48 on stolen base opportunities this season. 3-2 pitch, ball four. Here's Haley Morrow. Runner at first is Kamoku. Lily Owens at second. Morrow, her last time up, a strikeout victim. Maxwell brings home the first pitch and threw it right by her, swing and a miss. This is one of those situations where I want to see Kelly Maxwell kick it into fifth gear. I want her to start to speed up her pace. 
apply a little bit more pressure at the plate. Quickly jumps on top. No balls and two strikes. Your defense can't defend a walk. You give up your first hit of the game. You want to see her start to apply a little bit more pressure here with two outs. The 0-2. Up and away. Four and two-thirds so far for Maxwell. The walk was her first of the game. Four strikeouts, one hit. 89 strikeouts on the season. Looking for her 90th. The one-two. Check swing on a pitch up high. Did she go? No. This is the first full at bat that BYU has had with a runner in scoring position tonight. 2-2 two -two count tomorrow, who's sitting just 198 on the season. Maxwell brings it home. Got her swinging. Strikeout number 90 on the season. And her fifth of the game ends any BYU threat in the fifth. We head to the bottom half. Baker will lead things off in the bottom of the fifth inning. Sooners up 4-0. Orthodontics exclusively is proud to sponsor the junior captain of the game. Junior captain is the ultimate fan experience for children 6 through 12. Two locations in Norman and South Oklahoma City. Every consultation is free. Boomer, check him out at orthoexc.com. Ella Parker on the night. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. First pitch. Hard hit ball. Back up the middle into center field. Parker has her first hit of the night. It's the sixth for the Sooners. And OU has the leadoff hitter aboard for just the second time tonight, Aaron Miller. That's exactly what I was looking at, too, in my scorebook. It's the second time we've seen a base hit. Now leadoff, leadoff roll. This is, it's been an interesting evening. I feel like I have a lot all over my offensive mm -hmm. score chart for Oklahoma, but it, it, it just feels like this game has really dragged offensively for them. First pitch to Hansen, in for a strike. Kinsey, 0 for 2. My biggest takeaway is that we haven't seen a response on the off speed. And we've seen it from all three arms in the circle, every single one. Temples, Aguilar, and Dolly. There's a looper in center field, falling fast. It's down for a hit. Parker had to wait for a moment. She'll hold up at second. Sooners have something cooking here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Are you noticing an adjustment at the play? I think that was just strength from Kinsey Hansen. This is only the second time we've seen back-to-back -back hits. So finally starting to string some things together. It's a game of momentum, and Oklahoma knows. We know how tangible momentum is. And right now, finally in the fifth inning, starting to see something brewing. Patty Gasso will go with Riley Ludlam here to pinch run. Didn't see Riley in the Texas series. But good to have her back with runners at first and second. Ludlam at first, Parker at second. Oklahoma looking to add to its 4-0 lead. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> Gordon Egan is out of the BYU dugout. I told you they've used seven or eight pitchers, yeah. so this is the approach. It is it's frustrating, but it's 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 brilliant. It's, it's an approach. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The second you start to see that an adjustment is being made, that they're starting to kind of figure out the cards of an arm, they make a switch. But here's what's been consistent is the off speed. In every single arm that they face, the off speed has been eating our lunch. Now, what, what do you want to see from the Sooner hitters? You've got your first two batters on. They change pitchers. It's a lefty-lefty matchup. Pickering struck out against her when she faced her in the second inning. What do you want to see from these Sooner hitters, Aaron Miller? So, so typically, this is what's so tough because it's a cross-up of approaches here. Right now, I'd want to hit behind runners. I'd want to smash something to right field and hit behind my two base runners. The problem is that that approach doesn't match with the timing of what they're seeing in the circle. Right now, they've got to see the ball late, which means a lefty-lefty matchup puts Cassidy Pickering lacing something down the left field side. Ludlam pinch running for Hanson at first. Zella Parker at second. 4 nothing Sooners, bottom of the fifth inning. 
Here's the first pitch to Pickering, and it's low for ball one. Infield's deep. Corner's playing behind the base pass. Your middle infield is almost in the outfield, playing on the fringe. Here's the 1-0 to Pickering, who's one for two on the night. That pitch misses a little bit low. Outfield's deep, too. Right now, defense is just deep. They're respecting the power of Cassidy Pickering. Four runs on seven hits for the Sooners. No runs on just one hit for BYU. Pickering takes a strike. Pickering hit it hard. Can she do it again? First and second, the pitch. She does. In the right field, it's a base hit. Patty Gasso will wave. The throw is cut off, and Ella Parker steps on home plate as Cassidy Pickering drives in the fifth run of the game. It's 5 nothing Sooners, and the game-ending run will come to the plate. A two-hit night for Cassidy Pickering. And she hits into the correct side of the field. Again, that, the cross-up there is that you want to stay late, you don't want to be early, but you also want to hit behind your runners. And she's able to be successful at that. Down the right field line, snags an RBI. Going to get a pinch runner here for Pickering, it looks like. She exchanges some intel with Sydney Sanders. And Hannah Core will pinch run. Trails Golf Club offers the perfect atmosphere for great golf and family fun. At the Trails, you'll find golf at its best and social events to enjoy all year. Entertain clients, enjoy friends, make family memories at the Trails Golf Club. Visit trailsgolf.com. That sun is almost behind the trees. We're almost <laughs> out of we, that sunset. We were able to shed the sunglasses in the booth. Just now. I just, just now. peeled them off. <laughs> <laughs> Sid Sanders with runners at first and third. Ludlam was able to make it from first to third because of how deep the outfield was playing. Send us home, Sid. First pitch to the Sooner first baseman is in for a strike. Late break from Core, who will easily slide in with a stolen base at second. They were... Maybe trying some shenanigans, some tomfoolery to see if they couldn't deke BYU into a throw down and snag a run. But oh, well, Kamoku cutting across from second yeah. base to cut that throw. They were ready. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Sidney Sanders. Pop foul down the right field line, and that'll slice out of play. She's sitting late. Right? You're starting mm -hmm. to see that timing. She fouls off opposite field. She's trying to see the pitch in, hitting it off the backside. And now the timing does match up to hit behind your runners here. This lines up perfectly for her to go opposite field. Behind 0-2, though, the pitch way outside. One ball, two strikes. Sanders, as we mentioned, has struggled a bit. Bud walked her last time up. Maya Bland pinch ran for her and was thrown out trying to steal, though many felt like a better replay angle would have resulted in Bland being called safe. Here's the one-two. Sanders hammers one. Deep to left field. Walk it off, Sid. Walk it off, baby. A three-run home run from Sid Sanders. And Oklahoma will beat BYU in run rule fashion as the Sooners put four on the board in the bottom of the fifth inning and win it by a final score of eight to nothing. Sid, the kid did it. That was a rocket. <laughs> Holy cow. No doubter. That was a frozen rope. I think a line drive that's still going. Unreal. A little bit of a late turn on here for Oklahoma, but they get the job done. That's the ball game. Sooners win it by a final score of eight to nothing. Our next break, 
will be the first break of the postgame show. We'll head down to the field to hear from Patty Gasso when we come back. The Sooners win it by a final score of 8 to nothing. This is Sooner softball from Learfield.